Hello and welcome everyone to a brand new Let's Platinum on the Trophy Hunter gaming channel and for this series we'll be getting the Platinum Trophy for Pathologic 2 on the PlayStation 4. Now I'll go through these options as quickly as I can. I wouldn't normally show this part but it's pretty important that we set the game up so that it's going to make our life a lot easier when it comes to doing the prerequisites for the trophies. And the options screen is the first thing you'll see when you start the game up. Now Pathologic 2 is a survival horror game but not in a typical Resident Evil style of survival horror we actually need to survive through 12 days uh, by eating sleeping making sure the plague doesn't affect us there's also a thirst mechanic which affects our stamina and also the events that happen day to day can be missed and we basically just need to structure our day uh, well enough so that we can do what we need to do in order to not only survive but get the trophies done as well which is why i'm going to alter a few things in the options menu now we're going to be presented with three difficulty levels, uh, Lava, Cocoon and Imago. Now Imago it's saying is the intended difficulty which is the hardest difficulty and believe me your life will be a living hell if you go for Imago. Uh, now it's completely up to you, you don't have to change the options if you don't want to, you can go for Imago by all means but I found myself in a death loop so I couldn't go any further, I think it was on like day five something like that because we're going to have to scavenge for food, my character was basically so hungry that I couldn't move without dying. Now if we go down to settings and we go down to difficulty, we're going to have intended difficulty at the top, which we turned off anyway by going for lava. But if we go down here, we've got all different player parameters. Uh, so if we go down to Amargo on the difficulty level and we go to our hunger speed. Now this is self-explanatory. It's how fast our character becomes hungry. So if we raise that right to the top, your character becomes hungrier quicker. If we lower it, then it's going to take longer for our character to become hungry to the point where we start losing health. Exhaustion speed, we want to leave it as it is because we will need to sleep um, and we will also need to have dreams in the game which are collectibles. Exhaustion damage, we're going to lower to 50%. Immunity recovery, we're going to raise that to the highest. So if we ever get infected, which we will need to become infected at some point, uh, we can quickly recover. Thirst speed, we want to lower it as low as possible. Stamina drain when running, as low as possible. Infection growth, we want to leave it at 100%. Food value, we want to raise it to the highest. So every time we eat some food, it's going to give us the most hunger recovery. Uh, clothes wear and tear, we're going to need to wear some protective equipment when going into plague districts. Uh, so we want to make our clothes last as long as possible. Same as weapons, we want the wear and tear to be as low as possible on that so they last longer. Damage dealt, we want to do the max damage we can. And the value of healing items such as bandages and tourniquets and things like that, we need to raise that to as high as we possibly can. And finally, we want to do damage received as low as possible. And infection chance, we want to leave it at 100% because as I said, we do need to become infected to unlock a trophy. Now there will be a tutorial that we have to go through before we get to this point. This is basically the game's introduction. Once you complete the tutorial, you will unlock your first trophy. Now there's no trophies linked to the tutorial. It's basically just going to explain how the game works, what you have to do. Uh, so I've skipped all that out. I've cut that bit out. But after this cutscene's over, we're going to unlock our first trophy and we're going to begin our day one. So here we go, starting off day one in Pathologic 2. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is loot these corpses here. Now basically we're going to be picking up a lot of uh, tradable items like the watch, the hooks, uh, the scissors and things like that. They become very valuable for trading later on. Uh, we're also going to be picking up um, some survival items such as the water bottles and the toast which will replenish our hunger. 
the water bottles will replenish our thirst and also a fingernail which you would have just seen now that is useful for fast travel around the map uh, we're going to go and speak to this guy here it's not essential a lot of these characters that i do speak to it won't be essential it's just for a bit of story um, i won't be reading anything but i will leave all the conversations on screen uh, so that you can read it yourself the answers to the dialogue it doesn't matter what you choose i'll let you know if you have to choose a specific answer um, and in a minute as well you'll see like a little diamond by one of the conversations answers once you choose an answer with a diamond by it then it will exhaust the conversation completely uh, some conversations you can just exhaust straight away if you wanted to other conversations um, you need to carry on to learn a bit more information you'll get new quest markers uh, you'll get new places on the map to visit and things like that But we just got a tourniquet from uh, this Lyca guy here. Now a tourniquet will improve our health. Now, you don't have to speak to these two birds if you don't want to, um, but you definitely need to speak to this reflection sitting behind one of them. Now, the reflections are collectibles in the game. I think there's seven altogether. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what you say to them. All you have to do is exhaust a conversation so you can't talk to them anymore, and then it will count towards your no reflection trophy. Now our main objective for day one in Pathologic 2 is to reach 8pm by doing absolutely everything that we can do on day one. I'll explain a bit more as we go through the day, but I am going to split these videos up into three parts, uh, simply because it takes about two and a half hours to finish a single day off in Pathologic 2. So for time's sake um, and for recording's sake and things like that, I'm just going to split them down into two or three parts per day, and plus it'll be easier to follow along. So you'll notice that there's a little bar flashing at the bottom of the screen there which says thirst. Uh, now this is our stamina bar. The red part is where our stamina is blocked. But if we go to this water fountain here then we can grab ourselves a drink. We can also fill up our water bottles which we will need for later on. We uh, become thirsty when we're like traveling around the map. We can just drink from the water bottles but otherwise we can drink from the water fountains which I do recommend uh, for at least the first two days. And um, they will become polluted as the days go on. But now you can see it's turned to stamina and every time you run, every time you fight, every time you attack, your stamina will deplete. And also when you eat as well, you will become thirsty. So just grab yourself some water and that'll sort that out. So we're now on our way to Artemy Borak's house. Um, it's our first marker on the map. But on our way there, we're going to see these, uh, these skips. Now, if you loot these skips, you're going to find things like uh, empty bottles. You're going to find mechanical scrap. You're going to find all sorts of awesome things. So every time you see one of those bins, I would highly recommend that you do loot it. Now the loot is random, so what you see on my screen may not necessarily be what you get. But it does respawn every single day, I think. Um, so you can go back to the bins and there's different things that are in there. And especially when the towns get plagued, you get more valuable items. Uh, this guy here, we can trade with him. Uh, he's going to offer us tourniquets for bottles of water. Now, bottles of water will become very very precious later on uh, so i wouldn't advise trading with him uh, tourniquets aren't really that useful as i said before they do uh, replenish your health but there's other ways uh, we can replenish our health without using tourniquets and things like that So when traveling from A to B, I'm going to try and speed the video up so you're not sat there just looking at nothing. But I will leave everything in and when something important happens along the way, or if anything important happens along the way, then I'll, uh, I'll slow the video back down to normal speed and I'll talk you through that part. But for now, we're going to head to uh, Artemy Borak's house, which is our protagonist, the guy we're playing as. And we're going to learn a bit more about why we're here. So here we go through this gate and we're going to see a crowd of people outside uh, Borak's house. And basically, again, you can just speak to whoever you want to speak to. You can say whatever you want to say. It doesn't matter. 
but you're going to get a bit more backstory about Borak's father, known as Isidore, and we're going to find out that he's basically been murdered. Now, Isidore was a very respected doctor. Um, he made tinctures, medicines, um, and he basically looked after the whole entire of this town, especially the kids, which we will get to know later on. The kids are a vital part of this story. Um, they'll give you so much information, it's unreal. And there's also a to uh, trophy called Tag, which we can pop by trading with children 27 times. So uh, keep a lookout for children. We won't be doing it in day one necessarily, uh, but days two onwards, so we definitely will be trading because it can give us things like medicines, um, schmauder is one thing we definitely need to look out for, as well as food and things like that. So this guy mentions Fat Vlad. Uh, Fat Vlad is basically the ruler of uh, of this town. He's he's the rich guy. He's the guy with money. We'll uh, we'll we'll meet that guy later on. But again, it doesn't matter what you say to this fella. So if you wanted to go through it quickly, then you could easily just choose one of the diamond dancers and exhaust the conversation. So once you've spoken to three onlookers, then you're going to want to go and introduce yourself to this little guy over here. Now this guy is known as Sticky. He was basically an apprentice of Isidore. He becomes very, very important later on in the game. He is tied to a couple of trophies. Um, so we will get to learn a lot more about this guy. But for now, it's just a quick introduction and he says he won't forget us. Now let's go and check this bin over here, see what's in here. Some marbles. Again, good tradable item for kids. And we want to head to Ruben's apartment. Now, Ruben's apartment is shown as these two little hands shaking, I think they are. And Ruben is one of Artemy's best friends from back in the day. Uh, so we're going to go and want to check that out. And when we get to Ruben's apartment, we can pop a hidden trophy, which is our first hidden trophy. It can only be obtained on day one, which is carpet bagger. So I'm, I'll show you how to do that. And we got some more marbles there in this bin, nice. Let's go and fill our stamina meter up a little bit. Quench our thirst, fill up a few water bottles. So around the corner, we should have Ruben's apartments. There we go. Now this game does have horrendous load times, especially when you're entering an, a house or if you go into another district within the map. Um, it takes a good few seconds to load the textures and things like that. But if we head on inside and we head on up the stairs through the only open door which we can enter anyway, uh, we're going to see a guy known as the Bachelor sat down. Now again, you can say whatever you want to this guy, he's basically just going to introduce himself and he's going to basically ask you to trust him and work with him throughout the story. So all we need to do is just chat to this guy, exhaust the conversation and then head back out of the building. So if I haven't mentioned already, then the main point we want to do for day one is we want to finish all three quests and basically finish everything we've got to do before 8pm in game. This will unlock us the on the run trophy, now it can only be obtained on day one. But I'll show you a quick way of how to get that. But it does involve doing this quest, which is Ruben's quest. It'll involve doing a quest for the Soul and the Halves. It will involve a quest for Grief and also Lara. These characters we're going to meet a little later on. But we also need to do it in such a way 
uh, that we get two dreams. Now, dreams are another collectible throughout the game. I think there's ten dreams in total, but on day one, there are two dreams which we can get. So once you've spoken to the bachelor, you want to head back down the stairs and out the main door we came through. And you'll notice how quickly that loads. Uh, you've got them going to want to speak to these two children. Now these two kids are going to introduce you to the Solon Halves, which is our next destination after we've done all this little part. And basically the Solon Halves are at war, but again we'll learn more about this as time goes on. So once you've spoken to Ace, you're going to want to head back into the building and back up the stairs and speak to the Bachelor. Now this is where we're going to unlock the Carpet Bagger Trophy, which is a hidden missable trophy. Again, only obtainable on day one. So all we need to do is just speak to him again. Answers don't matter, so you can say whatever you want to this guy. Um, and once we've finished speaking to him, the Carpet Bagger Trophy will have unlocked. And there we go, carpet baggers pop. So again, we're gonna to wanna to head out of the door. Once we have, we're gonna head wanna head back in to where we just came from. Uh, this time, we're gonna to wanna to loot the room the bachelor was just sat in because we need to uh, gather some money and some supplies. We need the money for a bull, which we need to buy on day one. Um, and then we'll get the, the trophy on day 11. So a lot of the trophies in this game will require you to do certain things on certain days speak to certain people on this day, speak to certain people on the next day, and then the trophy will pop on that following day. Uh, so if we go over to this cupboard here and we loot it, we'll grab ourselves 123 coins and some chalk. Uh, now the chalk, again, is useful for trading with the kids. And these drawers over here should contain some money and some more chalk and some other bits and bobs. Some more money. Okay, and through this door, now that on the right there is a save point. There's no auto saves in this game, uh, so you do have to manually save every time a new day starts. Um, well, I advise that you save every time you start a new day, uh, simply because if you miss any trophies or anything like that, you can reload that particular save because it saves on a different save file, and you can go back, do what you need to do, and you don't have to play the game from start to finish again. Because there are alternate endings, uh, certain things we need to do for one ending, Throughout this playthrough, we're not going to die, or we're going to try not to die anyway. Um, because if you die, it does affect the game. And it's not a case of if you die, reload your save, and that death doesn't count. 
that death counts. Even if you reload your save game, it still classes you as one death. Um, if you die, then try not to die any more than seven times because you will be offered a deal by the guy who we met during the introduction of the game. That's also tried to, tied to a trophy, so we don't want to do that yet. If you take that deal, you'll be locked out of every single ending the game has to offer, basically. Uh, and you're going to have to replay the whole thing again. When we get to that, I'll explain it all as we go. So, we're finally done in Ruben's apartment and we're going to head outside. Now, our next destination is the Soul and a Half's base, and that is in the warehouse where we started the beginning of the game, pretty much. So, if we're going to want to head over there, it's a little cat icon. If you just see the screen flicker there as well, that's because I press square. If you want to, if you press square, um, then you will go into like a sneak mode. Uh, because we do become hated a little later on, so it makes it harder for us to walk around. I do apologise if things are confusing you at the moment, if I'm going too fast. Everything will make sense as the game goes on. But this game is absolutely awesome. Uh, it's a survival horror, and as you can see, we literally we have to look after our stamina, our thirst, our hunger. Uh, exhaustion plays a part, so we do have to sleep. Immunity as well, we can catch the plague and that will affect our health. That's how we can die as well. Another empty bottle, nice. These empty bottles, very, very useful because we will be performing surgeries as well just to pick your brain and peck your brain even more. There's a lot to this game, a lot of mechanics and it's absolutely awesome. And you're going to want to head into this warehouse here and this is the Soul and a Halves base. So inside the Solon Harvest base, uh, this young chap here is known as Notkin. He's the leader. Again, he's a, another main character to the story. So you can say what you want to this guy at this point. Basically going to ask you if murder is good or if murder is bad. And depending on what you say will depend on what happens next like type thing. But as far as I'm aware, this game is pretty linear when it comes to this type of stuff. Uh, it's only related into trophies and things like that where answers matter. So if we talk to Notkin again, we will be given his part of the mission. Now the first time we spoke to him, it was in relation to us, and why we murdered who we murdered. This time, we're going to be doing a quest for Notkin, which we need to do for the On The Run trophy. So if you follow what I'm doing, and in the order that I do it, then you'll get this On The Run trophy, no problems whatsoever. And again, say what you want to him, it doesn't matter. So Notkin's given us a leash, um, which we will be needing for the next part of the quest. But first of all, we need to talk to this young girl here, and we need to choose specific answers. So if you follow what I say on the screen, we will end up being given some food, water, and some like milk. Uh, so first of all, if you want to respond with thank you, uh, it'll take you to the next part. Now next, we want to exhaust the conversation. We want to choose, all right, thanks for the gift. And she will give us milk, water, bread. Now this is our first trophy which we need to do something on day one but we will have to come back and speak to her on day two and uh, day two is when we're going to pop the trophy. So basically we just need to keep a piece of toast in our inventory and go back on day two and talk to this girl again and then we'll pop the trophy. Uh, the trophy is called In Kind I think for that one. But yeah milk is one of the best items in the game. It fills your hunger bar pretty much back to full and it will also replenish your thirst.
So the next place we need to go is on this little hand icon here, and this is the quest that we need to do for Notkin. It's not too far away from the Solon Harves base. If you take a left from where the warehouse is and through this little gap in the wall, you're going to come across a train station and basically it's just a big, massive, open, open field. You're going to see some rocks and you're going to go and speak to a guy down there. And the guy we're going to be speaking to is the guy we first spoke to at the beginning of the game. So as you can see, there's our destination. And if you talk to this guy, you're going to find out that it's Lika again, or Lika. Now, there are specific options we need to choose for this conversation as well. So as soon as the part comes where you see the diamond to exhaust a conversation, choose that option. Otherwise, this you'll end up find, playing hide and seek with this guy throughout the whole of the game. As I said, we need to complete this mission in order for the on-the-run trophy to pop. So we basically want to say to him, we'll give him the leash, it's a gift, um, and that's job done. Now next, we need to head back to Notkin, back in the Soul and a Half's warehouse. So as I said, I'm going to do these videos in parts. So for day one, there is a part one, two, and three. Plus I tried to render the whole of day one in Pathologic 2 as like one complete guide. Uh, but the render time was about 18 hours, I think it turned out to be. Uh, but if I keep it relatively low, around 25 to 30 minutes, the render time isn't too bad. It's about two, two and a half hours, something like that, instead of a whole entire day, pretty much, rendering one video. So once we're back at the Soul and Harv's base, we're going to want to head back inside, and we're going to want to speak to Notkin again. So Notkin's basically going to tell us he thinks we're decent, and we've done a good job. And he will also give us a leash after we spoke to him as like a, a prize for doing doing good on this uh, this little task he's given us. And that leash will come in handy later on, so be sure to keep hold of it. Don't trade it, don't drop it. Um, as I said, it does become useful, particularly on day four. That's it for part one of day one in Pathologic 2. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, then please drop it a like, subscribe if you're new. Hopefully see you in the next part. And that's all from me, guys. Take care.